in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a selection of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. It is Thursday, the 24th of October, 2024, 29th week in Ordinary Time. And today we keep the optional memorial of Anthony Mary Claret, Archbishop and founder of a congregation Born on December 23rd, 1807 in Salent, Spain, and died on October 24th, 1870. He was aged 62 in France. St. Anton Mary Claret was a son of a weaver in Spain. He was ordained a priest in 1835 and founded the Congregation of the Missionary Sons of the Immaculate Heart of Mary in 1849, known as the Claretians. He was named Archbishop of Santiago, Cuba, and spent many years there reforming the seminary and strengthening the clergy. Upon returning to Spain, his works brought him many enemies, and he eventually died under house arrest at a Cistercian Abbey in France. Thanks to him, we have the Claretians who are involved in spreading the word. They make Bible diaries that many of us are benefiting from. And as I speak, we have over 3,000 members working in five continents, more than 65 countries around the world, out of which 17 are in Africa. We want to pray for the Claretians all over the world, that through the intercessions of their founder, they may remain true to their charism and may continue being an influence in the world. We also want to pray for the country of Zambia, my home country, that today celebrates 60 years of independence, of political independence, that the country may continue growing in strength, especially in the fear of the Lord. Participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following Daily Bread members. Jacinta Anave celebrating her birthday today, studying in Canada, takes for us the first reading. Bridget Dube from Rua, Zimbabwe, celebrating her birthday today, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Enes Pius Asimwe from Kiinda Diocese in Uganda. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. Rooted and grounded in love, may you be filled with all the fullness of God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. Brethren, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have power to comprehend with all the sense what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, 
that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, Psalm 33, 1 to 2, 4 to 5, 11 to 12, and 18 to 19. The response is taken from Psalm 33, verse 5b. And the response is, The Lord's merciful love fills the earth. The Lord's merciful love fills the earth. Bring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for the upright. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp, with a ten-stringed lute singing songs. The Lord's merciful love fills the earth. For the word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and his merciful love fills the earth. The Lord's merciful love fills the earth. The designs of the Lord stand forever, the plans of his heart from age to age. Blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord's merciful love fills the earth. Yes, the Lord's eyes are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. The Lord's merciful love fills the earth. Gospel Acclamation, Philippians 3, 8-9a I count everything as refuse in order that I may gain Christ and be found in Him. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 12, verses 49 to 53. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, I came to cast fire upon the earth and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how I am constrained until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. Henceforth, in one house there will be five divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against her mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, 
and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. St. Paul, after giving a homily on the mission of the world, which is the third segment of the letter to the Ephesians, now wants to conclude with a prayer. It is like he is kneeling as he concludes that part, which is a very essential part of the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. He kneels before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, like linking the heavenly horse with the earthly beings. This prayer is very, very important because he wants to say the message of the gospel, whatever has been preached, has been about the love of Christ. It is love that connects. It is love that unites. And so he says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Christ should not be an external reality, but somebody who dwells in our hearts through faith, so that rooted and grounded in love, you may have strength to comprehend with a sense what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. We cannot study the love of Christ because it's beyond knowledge. We can only live it. The love of Christ may be very irrational because he loves even the unlovable because he didn't die for the best, he died for the rest so that they may become the best. He is very irrational in the way he loves us. That's why it's beyond knowledge. He will say he can leave the 99 and go for the one. He cares about you and me. We are special in his keeping and he wants us to understand that that's a mission entrusted to us. We have to show that love to every human being. Let people know that our love may be even very irrational because we are following the love of Christ in our lives. We want to be like Christ. Jesus speaks of the fire in the gospel passage of today that he came to bring on earth and that it were already kindled. He can't just wait to see that fire burning within every individual who has understood the love of Christ because love burns within. Love is something that is unstoppable and when you are in Christ Jesus as an individual, nothing will stop you, not even the family can stop you from fulfilling that love. That's why he says, I came to bring strife. I came to bring discord because when you are in love with Christ, I am telling you, nobody will stop you from doing good. Nobody will stop you from showing your love to your fellow human being, not even your brother, not even your mother. You are on fire. And that fire burns within and makes you live a life that is worthy of God's calling. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Thursday to you. Thanks be to God.